Hey folks, welcome back. Okay, as promised, I'm here at Aranus Peace, having just eaten and slept after a hard night's thieving. And I'm gonna finally go ahead and explore, yes, what's in this cave. I know you've all been wondering what's in the cave, so let's find out. As your eyes adjust from sunlight to darkness, you examine the interior of this eerie cavern. You sense something moving off to your right. There's really not much here except the thing that's moving off to your right, and you can probably tell, yes, it's a bear. It's a very large bear which rears up as you approach. It looks hungry and dangerous. Well, you can fight the bear, but you really don't want to do that. And I'll... Well, I could fight the bear and show you what happens, but... Um, oh, what the heck, why don't I do that? I'll save the game at bear, just so you can see what happens. Then I'll say fight. I should be able to fight the bear easily. So we beat the bear. Turns into a human who dies. The body lying there looks a lot like the picture of the Baronet von Spielberg on the poster at the Guild Hall. You have a funny feeling that you may have made a slight tactical error. That's right, folks. You're not supposed to kill the bear. Do that, and it's just just bad all around. Just a bad thing to do. But you need to somehow get past the bear, because if you try to just walk past, he kills you with one swipe. Oh no! Boy, that's smarts. Your last thoughts, although trivial, gently nudge you toward infinity. I wonder if the bear's paws were clean. That's the last thing. That's really the last thing you want to think as you die. I wonder if that bear's paws were clean. So here's what you can do. You can feed the bear, and give it a food ration, but since we have some magical ability, I'm just going to cast the Calm spell, which will calm down the bear. Suddenly, a feeling of peace and tranquility permeates the area. Which then allows us to walk right past the bear. Because the bear is all calmed down now. As you look across this section of the cave, you see a kobold resting on a ledge across from you. And anyone who's seen Lord of the Rings probably knows what a kobold is. It's basically kind of like what Gollum was. You go! No stay here! I could have snuck up to the kobold. What you can actually do is you can sneak and walk up to him. But I'm doing it the, the manly fighter way. I'm just gonna make lots of noise and come charging up and fight him. Because we we've got the we've got the character stats for it by now. And he teleports back and forth between a couple of locations, but there we go, we killed him fairly easily. And when he dies he transforms into a actually he doesn't transform into a key, he leaves the key behind. The key was actually hanging around his neck. And when he dies, he leaves the key behind. You can actually sneak up to him and just seal the key right off his neck without killing him or attacking him or even waking him. But, yeah, the key lies on the stone where you last saw the cobble. Yeah, if you're a fighter, you get points for killing the cobbled, so you get max points, you have to kill him. You get the key, you take the key, yeah. There's one other thing you want to do here. If you just walk down here, you seem to have bumped into an unseen object on the cave floor. You examine it by touch. It feels like a wooden chest. It must have been made invisible by the cobbled. Can we open the chest? How? Uh, force chest, just like we did before. You attempt to smash your way into the invisible chest. You pry at the sealed lid of the chest and... Wow! The chest must have been booby-trapped. You can really feel the damage from the blast. Alright, so we got hurt a little bit. Not that badly, though. Eh, not too shabby. Let's get this gold. You add 10 gold and 60 silver pieces to your money pouch. That's a lot. Now, of course, you're carrying so much that you can hardly move. You better drop something soon. Oh, well. The only other thing in this room is the table. Under the table. Something is lying in a pile on the table. Mushrooms, toadstools. These mushrooms are completely worthless. You can't sell them to the healer. And if you try, she'll get mad at you because you're trying to trick her or whatever. So, just ignore the mushrooms. They're absolutely worthless, and there's nothing else we can do in the cave. We killed the cobbled, stole his treasure, got his key. We're done. Now we can come back here. And let's have another look at the bear. On one side of this cavern is a creature which looks like a large bear. Oh, one thing you, one thing I almost forgot to do. Let's talk to the bear. You know that bears can't talk, right? What if we're persistent and try a second time? Hi there! I represent Ditto Realty. We have some lovely properties that are proven bargains. We know that's true because we sold them so many times. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a not so subtle reference to the talking bear which was about the only tourist attraction in Oakhurst, California where Sierra used to be based 
Uh, it's kind of a long story, actually, but if you want to read up on the talking bear, it's kind of a running gag through some of Sierra's games. Can I talk to the bear again? He gives the same message. Okay. The bear is also, as you probably noticed, the bear is chained to the floor with a chain around one of its legs. So I'm going to cast Calm one more time to calm the bear, make sure that the bear stays calm. A feeling of peace and tranquility permeates the area. And I'm going to free the bear, because now we have the key that unlocks this chain. Cobbled's key disappears as you turn it in the lock. Oh, wow. You have the honor of meeting the Baronet Barnard von Spielberg. We are pleased that you broke our enchantment. Perhaps our father, the, uh, blah, blah, he invited us to the castle. I didn't make it through reading the whole message, but oh well. The arrogance of the Baronet astonishes you. Perhaps the Cobbled magic user had a reason for changing him into a bear. Yes, that Baronet Bernard von Spielberg is a rather, uh, arrogant and sassy young man. It's kind of annoying, actually. Okay. We've been invited to the castle, which is great. But before we go to the castle and pass the night, I'm going to save the game here as Freed Bear. There's one thing you really don't want to miss, folks, and I'll show you just what it is. After you you deal with that bear. Ah, uh, I couldn't run away from this brigand because... Uh, uh, no. Oh man, I'm so... I'm so weighed down with all the silver and gold I'm carrying that I can't even run away from monsters now. It's kind of ridiculous. Okay, I made it back here. At my earliest opportunity, I want to sell off some of this stuff that I stole from those houses, because that's part of what's weighing me down. I want to fence those stolen goods. Actually, I can do that while I'm here, because the, uh, the Thieves' Guild is in the uh, underneath the tavern. Aha! After you dealt with the bear, a note appears under the stool. And sometimes this note is here at the start of the game, but it doesn't say anything important. But now it says something very important. Let's get the note and take a look at it. You pick up and read the note. You smooth out the piece of paper and read. B. Meet me at the old archery range south of town at noon. Urgent. B. Th uh, these are two gentlemen, both with names starting with B. Uh, one of them is Bruno, the thief who you might remember us talking to at the front gates of the town, the guy who told us how to get into Baba Yaga's hut. The other guy is uh, another guy who we haven't met yet, but we will soon because these two characters are meeting at the archery range south of town at noon and it's mid-morning so if i went to the castle now if i accepted the baronet's invitation to go to the castle now and slept the night there we would miss this key meeting between these two guys so make sure folks that after you kill the bear you make it to that meeting at the archery range south of town at noon it's urgent oh you know what I'm going to uh, fence some of my stolen goods here. Hey, Crusher, Purple Saurus, let's, let's go down to the Thieves' Guild and get rid of some of this stuff that we're carrying. Let's see, let me check our inventory. What all do we have? Uh, we have the Alabaster Vase. Let's fence that vase. Let's see, you know, deducting the Guild Cut and allowing for resale markup that comes to 40 silvers. Here you are. You know, I've, yeah, it gives us a little running count. I don't really care how much I have. I just want to get rid of all this stuff. Fence the candelabra. Let's see, you now deducting blah, blah, blah. 75 silvers. Here you go. That's not too bad. Music box. Fence music box. Blah, blah, blah. That comes to 30 silvers. Uh, fence the candlesticks. Blah, blah, blah. is 50 silvers. What else? Oh, yeah. Fence the pearls comes to 100 silvers. The irony of all this is that even though we're getting rich, I'm going to probably want to drop a bunch of those silver coins anyway because they're just going to weigh us down. Uh, I don't think, yeah, it doesn't look like we have anything else that we can fence here, so I'm going to wait for him to throw a dagger so I don't get hit. There we go, he threw a dagger, and while after that, get out of here. Okay, that's probably the last time we're going to go to Thieves Guild because there's nothing else useful there that we can do. What time is it now? It's still mid-morning. Okay, folks, I'm going to save the game. 
on my way to a meeting. Yes, we have a meeting between two, uh, two bees to catch. And we'll witness that in the next video. Should be a lot of fun. I'll see you then, folks. Take care.